please welcome Linda Rosenberg. Good morning, good morning. Okay, so now can I say I was on Jimmy Kimmel? Does that count? A voiceover. Yes. To my family, it better count, I have to say. Talk about one second of fame instead of 15 minutes, but I'll take it. So good morning. Uh, we hope these past days have lived up to your expectations. Good, yes, yes. You know, I thanked our sponsors and exhibitors, and I thank the very talented National Council team, and now it's really your turn. Um, each of you is vital to our association, to our political influence, that's why many of you are already on the Hill, and to the people in your communities across the country. So thank you so much for traveling from all over to be here with us. We are very, very grateful to you. So I'm gonna clap for you, okay? <laughs> clap for yourselves, excellent. Well, last summer, New Hampshire Senator Kelly Ayat topped Newsmax Magazine's list of the 25 influential women of the GOP. A former prosecutor and state attorney general, she's devoted her life to public service. Smart, sensible, and prepared, she is somebody to watch. Senator Ayat has long championed improved mental health training for law enforcement and for their communities. She introduced the bipartisan Mental Health First Aid Act and made sure that mental health first aid was part of the Mental Health Awareness and Improvement Act. Her efforts, yes, please, her efforts. Her efforts resulted in $15 million that will train teachers and school personnel. In recognition for her very powerful leadership on behalf of people living with mental illness and substance use disorders, in 2013, the National Council named her a Legislator of the Year. Unfortunately, and to my lasting embarrassment at that event honoring her, I announced that she was a great senator from a great state. Unfortunately, it was the great state of Alaska. That was not so good. Well, this time I'm prepared to do better. We are very grateful that she made the trip here from Capitol Hill in a very busy schedule. Please welcome a rising star in any party, Senator Kelly Ayotte from the great state of New Hampshire. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so you. much, we appreciate you. it. Wow, I am so honored to be here with all of you today. And uh, I have to say, having seen a little bit of the Capitol steps, this is kind of a tough act to follow. Um, but first of all, I just want to thank Linda for the incredibly kind introduction, for her leadership, and for the important work she does as the director of the National Council for Behavioral Health. Uh, I was uh, backstage kind of talking about the conference and learning what you have been doing the last couple of days, and it sounds like it has been a phenomenal experience. I hope it has for all of you, because what you're doing is so important for our country. So I want to thank you for that. I also need to give a shout out uh, from my constituents from New Hampshire that are doing very important work in New Hampshire. Uh, Roland Lammy, who's the executive director of the New Hampshire Community Behavioral Health Association, and Maggie Pritchard, the CEO of Genesis Behavioral Health in Laconia. I am so grateful for their dedication in treating Granite Staters, in keeping the focus on making sure that we have those mental health services and the treatment for substance abuse, abuse disorders. So I want to thank them for their leadership. And I also want to recognize, I know following me, you're going to have the opportunity to hear from Congressman Patrick Kennedy. Uh, he is a true leader when it comes to raising awareness and reducing the stigma surrounding mental health and substance abuse disorders. And I just admire him because he's shown tremendous courage in sharing his own experience in dealing with mental illness and addiction 
And to have a leader like that that is willing to come forward and share his own experiences really brings it to the forefront as we look at the policy decisions we need to make in Washington that'll make a difference to improve our mental health system and the way that we address substance abuse disorders. So uh, I, I know I won't get a chance to see him personally, but I admire him very much, and I'm so glad that he's going to be here with you today. Uh, I'm glad to be here as you, I know many of you have already hit the hill. Some of you are going to uh, see members of your delegation even following uh, my speech today. And I want you to know that your voice matters on Capitol Hill on this important issue about quality of life and the way that we treat people in this country. So the best feedback I get are from my constituents. And when you look at the pieces of legislation that are bipartisan, that are moving forward, that need to move forward at an even faster pace, please don't underestimate the power of your voice and the difference that you can make on Capitol Hill. So we want to hear from you. We want to know what your opinions are. And I know that efforts in Congress to strengthen our nation's mental health system could not be more urgent at this time or more important. So go there with a sense of uh, purpose and passion. I know you all have, because we need to hear from you on the Congress. And this is not a partisan issue. This is an issue about our country. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the pieces of legislation I know that uh, I've been working on, that you'll be advocating for, and that you're making the difference on, that we, we together can work to make a difference for our country. Uh, as Linda said, before I came to the Senate, I had the privilege of serving as Attorney General for the state of New Hampshire. And as Attorney General, I was the Chief Law Enforcement Officer for our state. And I saw firsthand uh, the impact of mental illness, substance abuse disorders, and how they intersect with our criminal justice system, and also the challenges uh, that are presented to not only our law enforcement officials, our public health officials, our first responders. And it was that experience first that I had as Attorney General that really uh, drove my interest in this issue. And it's clear that our nation's mental health system is facing some serious challenges right now, that we need to strengthen this system, that all of you are an important part of this system, but we all know that we can do much better for the people of this country. I'd like, thank you. Here's the good news. As I've said, it's not partisan. There's a lot of bipartisan agreement on these issues, that more must be done. And I guarantee that every member of Congress has an experience with mental illness or with a substance abuse disorder, either personally or a friend or a family member. And that is really, when you think about it, why this needs to be bipartisan, why the legislation that I know you've been working on has been bipartisan, and why I've been honored to work across the aisle on this important issue. Uh, one of the, the bills I know that you're going to be talking about on the Hill today, and I'm so appreciative that you're going to be doing this, is work to advance uh, the Mental Health First Aid Act, which I introduced with Senator Mark Begich, who's a Democrat from Alaska. That's probably why I was designated the senator from Alaska. Uh, so I'm not offended by that at all, in fact. Uh, but this important legislation would provide grants to states and private nonprofits to help the public better recognize the early warning signs of mental health crises. Improving mental health first aid training for those who work in our schools, our hospitals, law enforcement, and elsewhere in our communities will help give them the tools that they need to identify and address early warning signs that help direct those in need to available resources in the community. And by training the people on the front lines, because often they very much lack training in this area, and they don't know what to do. They struggle with what to do. And this type of training will allow them to, see, to understand the signs of mental illness, to work with individuals to get them proper treatment, 
And I was very glad to work across the aisle uh, to get $15 million in the appropriations bill. And I want to recognize the others that worked so hard on this, Congresswoman Lynn Jenkins, Congressman Ron Barber, as well as uh, Senator Mark Begich. Uh, but we need to get the law passed is the bottom line. I've also been honored to work on, uh, across the aisle uh, as a co-sponsor of the Garrett Lee Smith Memorial Act, which would help support critical suicide prevention act efforts. And unfortunately, this is another area where I know all of us in some way have a personal experience or a personal experience uh, with a friend or a family member. And this act needs to be reauthorized right away. Uh, I, I see this as a huge priority. And with lives depending on it, we don't need to wait another day when it comes to passing the Mental Health Awareness and Improvement Act. This bipartisan legislation uh, includes a portion of the Mental Health First Aid Act that we talked about, but I'd like to get that passed separately also so we have all of it in law. It includes the Garrett Lee Smith reauthorization, and it received 95 votes in the United States Senate. Tell me what receives 95 votes in the United States Senate. So what? But here's the problem. The legislation it was attached to didn't get passed. So what we need is a standalone vote on this legislation. I actually think we could get this passed by unanimous agreement. We just need to bring it up and get it done because it already has 95 votes. I actually think we can get 100 votes for this. So myself, Mark Begich, others, we're going to keep pushing to get this passed now in the United States Senate. Now, having, uh, having served as Attorney General, one of the challenges that I hear and have continued to hear a great deal about is in our law enforcement community. Uh, many of our jails too often are serving as de facto housing centers for individuals who struggle with mental illness and addiction. In many communities, there's a lack of available mental health treatment options, and that has actually pushed greater responsibility uh, to police officers, jails, and prisons where it frankly shouldn't be, and they need help. Uh, this trend is, has been resulting, I think, in some dangerous outcomes, but some tragic outcomes for people's lives. So some things that we can work on, I'm proud to be a, a sponsor of the Justice and Mental Health Collaboration Act that was introduced by Senator Al Franken. Uh, this is, again, a bill focused on providing law enforcement tools that they need to identify and respond to mental health issues, uh, but also support for mental health courts. Uh, I'm also a support of the Second Chance Reauthorization Act, because when I was AG, one of the things we worked on, and we need to do a lot better job on in this country, is that we're sending people to prison, and then they're in prison, and we're not treating the underlying mental illness that they have, we're not treating their underlying substance abuse disorder, and then they're sent out of prison after having uh, served their time, and yet they've gotten no help, they have no uh, they have no interaction or people or support in the community. And are we surprised when they're back and they reoffend and they're back in the prison again? It just doesn't make any sense. And I think that we can do a lot better job in ensuring that, that not only we help prevent people from going to prison that shouldn't be, uh, looking at things like the mental health courts and getting people the treatment that they need, but also that people are, who are, are in our prisons we don't create a system that actually just makes it so they feel that they're right back in, in this cycle that they can't get out of. It's bad for the country and it's bad for the individuals and for, for obviously their ability to live a quality life. And, I, and this is an issue we can do much better on. <laughs> Finally, I was also glad that Congress has approved a pilot project that's a very important project. I, I know that you heard last year from Glenn Close, and she's been a huge advocate on this issue, uh, based on the Excellence in Mental Health Act that is being led by Roy Blunt and Debbie Stabenow. And this is a great act. 
So last year, I was very glad to join in asking for support for this pilot. And I know uh, we will look closely and continue to support the pilot and really take those results and say, it's time for us to take those results into positive action to improve our mental health system. And I'm looking forward to that. So on a final note, let me just say, you're making this happen. What you do every day makes a difference for people in this country. The treatment that you're providing for those who have mental illness or suffer from a substance abuse disorder or unfortunately have a co-occurring disorder makes a difference in people's lives and the quality of life that we have in this country. We know that there's so much more that we can do to improve our mental health system. I look forward to hearing from you for working with you going forward because this issue needs to be a priority. This is about who we are. This is about the quality of life in this country. And this is about making sure uh, that people can lead productive and happy lives in this country. So I thank you every day for what you do and know that your voice makes a difference on the Hill. Together, we will continue to work to make sure that everyone who suffers from mental illness gets the treatment that they need and deserve, and that every person who subs suffers also from substance abuse disorders, that we can make sure that they get the treatment and that they have the support in the community that they, that they need, because we all know someone who has suffered, and people have suffered for too long. Thank you.